So uh, let's look at more circle, which we use for stress and strain transformations. So uh, basic premise is state of stress at a point is the straightest stress at a point, regardless how you look at it. I mean, uh, you know, it, it, it's what's going on there, but how you the the coordinate system that you choose is going to affect how you describe that state of stress. But regardless, it is still the same thing. Uh, so changing the orientation results in different stress states that are equivalent to one another. Uh, so yeah, the, the coordinate system we choose is arbitrary. Um, typically speaking, just you know whatever makes sense when we're trying to uh, solve the problem to begin with. The stress states that arise aren't. So, for example, you know, if we have uh, if we have this section here, we're pulling on it this way. If we just took a cross section here, the stress would just be, you know, p over a there. Whereas if we take a cr cross section this way, an oblique section, then what we're going to end the, the stress state along that face, we're going to end up with some combination of a normal stress and shear stress that need to arise in order to result in the same force, the same stress that, that, that would arise. So you know that's basically that's basically how how it works uh, individually. So if we're trying to figure uh, figure out what's going on here, uh, if we, we we can essentially take you know take take it where we start out with as a as a square element in our x y plane, and we can rotate uh, we can rotate our frame of reference so that we're looking at uh, something that is oriented. Uh, differently. So, we, so if we're looking at something that's oriented on the x prime y prime coordinate system there, uh, then essentially, we're, it, you know, regardless of, uh, you know, if, if this, you know, like if this square here is in equilibrium, then this square here at that same, uh, court, you know, at that same space, still needs to be in, in equilibrium. So we can define a triangle here that has stress states on it that are a function of the that that are defined based upon the original coordinate system. So you know that'll, that'll be defined based upon our 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 x faces, the stresses on our x faces. Uh, this one will be defined based upon the stresses on our y faces, the the negative x face and the negative y face in this in this case, and then this one here that's a function of what's going on with our uh, new coordinate system. But again, that triangle needs to be in equilibrium if the the, the squares are in, in equilibrium. So we can basically take that triangle there, and we can figure out what sort of forces are acting upon it. So again, the, kind of the first step there is to kind of uh, figure out how the sizes of the, the the surface areas on that little, I guess, because we're basically kind of doing a prism here. So we're doing something like this. Uh, so when we when we say this this little delta a here, that's referring to the cross section of that uh, face here. Whereas if we're looking, I guess if we looked at it from Kind of from a slightly different angle, from from down below, uh, then this this delta a cos uh, cos theta would be the size of this cross section here, and this delta a sine theta one would be the size of that that area there on the bottom there. So we got those areas uh, kind of as a function related to one another as a function of the angle that we're choosing. So how much are we rotating, how much are we rotating our coordinate system? Uh, and then we can just add up what forces would, would arise. So basically, so again, we, we've got our forces in the X and Y directions based upon our normal forces 
uh, on the original coordinate system, the shear forces in the original coordinate system, and then uh, the normal force in the new coordinate system, and the shear force in the new coordinate system. Uh, <clears throat> so those all relate, right? Uh, so uh, we can just add those up, right? Uh, so you know, simple enough. The sum of sum of the forces in the x prime direction. Uh, basically, what we need to do here is we need to add up any of the forces that are directly in the x prime direction. And then we need to add up any of these any of these other forces here that have uh, portions that would be in the x prime direction. So, for example, uh, if uh, so, for example, with this force here, uh, the magnitude of that force is the the delta a cos theta, so the size of that times the stress in the x direction. If we want to figure out what that is relative to this x prime, again, the x prime one's there, that's relative to this uh, here. So we just need to figure out, uh, again, we got, we got a triangle here. So we need to figure out what uh, the magnitude of the x portion is there. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna circle that in a red instead. So. Nah, it's supposed to be red. Let me pick the damn colors. That portion, that portion there of this original force. So again, we're just, if we're doing that, we're just taking the sigma x delta a cos theta and then multiplying that by, uh, 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 by cos theta again. <laughs> uh, so that'll be this term here. And again, negative because obviously that's in the negative x direction. Uh, sorry, negative x prime direction. So do a similar operation for, for uh, for all the other forces that we're looking at. And you get uh, you get this here. So uh, yeah, so uh, that uh, simplifies into this here. When solving for r sigma x prime. And then similar idea for uh, the forces in the y prime direction. Those can be used to solve for what the shear force here is, because that's the, you know, on, in the new coordinate system, that's the only force in the y prime direction on this little triangle. So same idea, just, you know, take, take all those forces that we've got and uh, uh, kind of Figure out what uh, portion of their met of their uh, what, what portion of the of those forces are acting parallel to the y prime direction. Uh, I just repeated that page, didn't I? Yeah. So uh, from that, we're able to get we're able to get this here. Uh, to solve for our, our sigma sigma x prime and our uh, tau x prime y prime, and similar idea to solve for our uh, y prime. Uh, So uh, you'll see again that uh, 
you know, these formulas here, they're going to be a function of the angle that we're that we're rotating to. So what we what we often want to do is we want to we want to be able to rotate this thing to an orientation that doesn't have any shear stress on that. So we call that a principal stress. So uh, no, kind of no matter what uh, what is going on on this square, no matter how much shear stress there is in whatever in the orientation we originally look at it to, there is always you can always tilt your head to some angle and be able to look at it in a coordinate system that doesn't have any shear stress. Uh, so that'll that'll bring us to uh, uh, some some angle where we just have just normal stresses. So again, those and those normal stresses could be positive or negative as as needed, uh, but uh, uh, they're going to be the only components there. Uh, <clears throat> so again, that's just us taking this formula here and plugging making that equal to zero. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just uh, do a bit of math. So um, if we take uh, this here and divide by cos, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't realize my head was covering that. Uh, take this here and divide by cos uh, 2 theta, uh, then we are able to obviously, uh, we can, this one cancels out, and when we take uh, sine two, uh, uh, 2 theta divided by cos 2 theta, we get tan 2 theta. So that, uh, that brings us to there, uh, and then obviously we just, uh, we're trying to solve for the shear speed. Uh, for the original shear, and we can solve for the original shear stress just by adding, uh, uh, sorry, uh, adding this to, moving this to the other side of the equation, so adding that, uh, and then uh, divide by this to get this. So 2 uh, times the shear stress, the xy shear stress, divided by the x stressed minus the y stress is equal to tan uh, 2 theta p. So that, that p denotes the angle you would need to rotate it to to get to your prime axis, uh, to your prime coordinate system. So that, that'll, that'll give you what uh, we call a... So, so you'll, you'll get uh, your sigma 1 there, and there'll also be obviously a sigma uh, two there, that'll be plus another 90 degrees. So it, it solving for that will get you, uh, well, we'll get you to the first, well, if you, sorry, um, either of these angles here are a valid solution for this equation here. If you just go ahead and punch, uh, 10, Inverse tan of two. Let's make that obviously a tau. Two tau x y over sigma x minus sigma y. Then your calculator is going to give you the smallest of the the, the smallest positive of those. Uh, well, sorry, yeah, no, they'll give you they'll give you the smallest of those two. Uh, so you just need to. Realize that to kind of to get to the next one, you just need to keep going. So I formatted it like this. This one likes to do, put the divided by minus two over there, whatever. <laughs> so uh, if we know what angles we need, uh, then we can also take those angles and punch them into these equations here that we had previously uh, determined were the equations to find our x, uh, our sigma x uh, prime and our sigma y prime. Uh, so our, our, our stresses, our new stresses in the new coordinate system. Plug that into there, and that gives you this. 
So uh, it'll be the average of those two plus or minus that there. <clears throat> so just, uh, you know, I, it, just keeping in mind here that um, if we take our x prime and our y prime and add them together, we get, uh, you know, if we add those two things together, this, these two things cancel out. And these two things cancel out. The plus and minus there cancels out. So, uh -uh. and we're left just with this term. So, uh, our sigma x plus sigma y over 2, 2 times that. So we're left with this. So basically, no matter no matter what orient, there's no there's no angles there at all. No angles there at all. So no matter what orientation you're looking at, the 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 normal stresses acting on those faces added together equal the same thing. So this is always going to be known before we do these stress concentra these stress calculations. So therefore, this is always known. We always know the average between our uh, uh, between our uh, our sigma x primes and our sigma y primes. So that'll be useful for yeah. Th then that's 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 kind of regardless of whether or not we're looking at the original orientation, uh, the prime orientation, the max shear orientation, which we'll get to in a second. Re regardless of those. That is valid. So we often denote that just as sigma average. We got the max in plane shear. So uh, again, we've got uh, this uh, shear transformation equation here, I'm trying to figure out what the uh, shear is. Uh, at any particular point relative to our angles and our original values. Now, if we want to figure out what the maximum um, is, uh, so again, you know, as we as we rotate this thing's going up and down, uh, so uh, if we want to find out where the max where the maximum <coughs> magnitude values are, maximum magnitudes, uh, we just need to take the derivative of that and set that derivative equal to zero. So do that, take your derivative, do a little math, and we end up being able to solve uh, for our, uh, our uh, theta s here, our theta maximum shear uh, as this. When we compare that to our principal shear orientation, that's this. So again, they are negative reciprocals of one another. So again, uh, uh, when we're talking just a tan function, uh, the, the, the points where the reciprocals occur relative to one another is at 90 degree intervals, right? Uh, so, but again, we got a two in front of this angle here. Uh, so the, uh, so, so the, the orientation of the, uh, angle for maximum shear relative to the orientation of the angle for maximum, uh, uh, da, 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 what am I trying to say here? Uh, the, the principal, sorry, the orientation for the principal stresses is plus or minus 45 degrees. So I say, for example, we had just a square here that is in its principle, uh, the orientation where we'd have the maximum shear would be this. And that's because, you know, we're pulling this way and this way, and we're pulling this way and this way, and that's going to develop a fair amount of shear stress here and here and here and here in order to 
kind of resists that. So uh, here's the here's what we use to calculate the magnitude of that maximum in-plane shear. I'm going to say in-plane because uh, I'll explain why I use in-plane here because uh, that uh, in a bit. But that's you know that's uh, that is us saying that uh, we're only examining stuff in the x y, whereas So we're we're saying that there's no forces here. We're also saying uh, no 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 normal forces here. We're also saying that there's no shear stress developing in the z direction. Um, sorry, my face was covered from that. So yeah, uh, assuming let's see here. So if we got an x, a y, and a z. Here, uh, yeah. So, so, assuming that you know this force here is zero, the shears are zero. Therefore, we're, we're finding our maximum in-plane shear. Uh, but we'll we'll talk about that in a little bit because that's not always the maximum shear, even when the original orientation uh, has our z direction forces zero. But uh, what we do is, so we get, we've got more circle here. So more circle is a graphical representation of uh, solving for these stress transformations. Now I'll walk, I'll walk through the derivation uh, for that. Uh, so again, we've got our formula here for the stress in the x direction. Sorry, the stress in the x prime direction. And we've got our formula here for the uh, shear stress uh, in the x uh, in the x prime, y prime orientation based upon how much we rotate. So we can rearrange the formulas a little bit uh, to give us this. So here we're just taking, uh, taking this term and moving it over to this other side. And then we're left with this stuff. And then similarly, uh, Similarly, if uh, this one, uh, oh, actually, no, sorry. This one, we're just keeping the same. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, what we do here is we square both sides. So we square this side, square this side, uh, and that gives us this, which when we do the squaring thing, you know, our a squared two 2ab b squared for squaring in two terms. Don't forget your 2a. Don't forget your 2ab. Uh, we get this. So our uh, yeah, yeah, squared signs here, squared signs there, and then plus our 2ab, and then squared signs just on this term here. Similarly, so. Same thing happens uh, down here. Uh, so just the uh, you know, uh, squared signs on this term. Don't forget your minus here disappears as a result of that. Uh, but uh, a minus sign stays on the 2ab term. And squared signs here. So adding those two equations together, Adding those two equations together, that gives us this. Uh, so uh, our uh, we've got a, a, a sigma x minus sigma y over two squared uh, times cos two 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 theta. Uh, sorry, cos squared two theta plus sine squared 2 theta. And then on the uh, shear term, again, another, uh, that the shear, the shear stress squared term is, is you know, also had a, a cos squared 2 theta plus a, a sine squared 2 theta. And for that, just remember your 
your trig identities that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. So this cancels out to 1, this cancels out to 1, and these two terms just cancel each other out because they're the same thing but 1 plus 1 minus. So then we're left with this. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, one thing that we one thing that we can uh, kind of simplify this with is everything here in that term is known sigma x sigma y uh, and our shear stress in the x y in the original orientation. So what we can is we can just call that some constant. So we're going to call that, uh, we're going to call this term here r squared. And there's a reason for that. Because if we have this and this and this, so our sigma x minus sigma average squared plus uh, tau x prime y prime squared. Uh, is equal to r squared. That's a formula for a circle, right? So if we were plotting that, that would end up with, if we're plotting that with uh, our sigma here and our tau uh, down here, so sigma increasing in this direction, tau increasing in this direction, uh, then uh, our x, sorry, our sigma, our sigma position for the center, center of the circle, that would be our average, our stress average. Uh, the radius, obviously, called it r for a reason, so that the magnitude of this radius of the circle is equal to uh, the average stress squared plus the shear stress squared. And then uh, the position of kind of the one known point that we have, so the, the, the position of the uh, point that we're looking at uh, is based upon uh, the uh, shear stress uh, at that point and the x and y, uh, uh, what should I call it, uh, the x and y positions. Uh, so again, if, so for example, if we had, something that was doing this, Say the shear here was, um, I don't know, let's go for 2 MPA. And say the, uh, let's say the uh, X stress was 3. And then the Y stress was, I don't know, let's call that Five MPA. Then uh, we would plot this. Uh, so let's figure out our R first. Well, let's uh, you know let's, let's figure out our average stress first. Uh, so our average stress is just our X stress minus our Y stress. Mm -hmm. 
So if we take those two equations and we add them together, uh, this is what we get. Uh, so first off, this here cancels out with this here because of the same term, just one has a minus on in front of it. So yay, they go away. Uh, and then uh, the, uh, just keep in mind uh, your trig identities of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. So this term here is one. This term here is one. Uh, so we are left with this and that, and then these two things. So everything here, that is something that is known based upon the original uh, stress state. Oh, sorry, based upon the stress state in the original orientation that we're looking at. So we're gonna we're just gonna take those and plug them in and say that's a constant, and we're gonna call that. Uh, well, we're going to call that r squared. So r is just the square root of that term. So if we got an r squared here, we've got a uh, tau squared in the x uh, prime y prime, and we've got uh, this uh, sigma x prime minus sigma average squared term here. So something squared plus something squared equals something else squared. Guess what? That is, sorry, equals a constant squared. Uh, that is the formula for a circle. So what we need to do, all we need to do here is plot that circle. So again, uh, uh, we do we do that uh, by, again, just, uh, so we got our we plot it on. We basically make the uh, sig the uh, normal stress uh, of the horizontal variable. A uh, variable, so that's increasing, uh, increasing to the right here. We get make the shear stress the vertical variable, so that's increasing downwards. Uh, the reason to do that is basically uh, if we wanted to take our orientation here shift it to say an orientation that was like this say let's say that's 45 degrees here or so uh, that allows us to go from one position on the circle and uh, <coughs> uh, rotate in the same direction basically whereas if it uh, was positive upwards then we would uh, be rotating uh, in the opposite direction. So yeah, we, we need a circle. So how do you define the graph of a circle? You define the graph of the circle by the location of the zero point, uh, the location of the center. So the location of that center is just that uh, sigma sigma average and uh, the uh, radius. So the radius is just this term right here that we that we talked about. So Again, everything here is based upon the, the, those two very those two variables. There are all based upon the original stress state. So uh, the stress state, uh, uh, the the location of uh, the stress, the original stress state. Uh, is just based upon the tau in that original stress state and the uh, sigma x on that uh, the original stress state. So, uh, ba ba ba. What am I trying to say? What am I looking at here? So, yeah, uh, we've got our stress state here. This is the x position here. Uh, so the position here would just be uh, based upon the stress there. And then the uh, y stress, that corresponds to this position here. So uh, again, if we go back up to here, just keep in mind that when we're 
if we are rotating, uh, we get this two uh, this two theta term here. So a rotation on the circle corresponds to an actual physical rotation equal to half of that. So going from going from this point on the circle to here, that's a that's 180 physically speaking, that's corresponding to going from this orientation where there are x our x uh, yeah going from this orientation where x is positive in this direction to this orientation where x prime is where the y <laughs> used to be that having been said we're usually not too worried about doing that because we already you know we already know what uh, uh, what the stress state is in that orientation it's just what's on the other face that we are already given or already calculated. Uh, so what we often want to do is we want to figure out how to get to this stress state here where there is zero shear stress. So we just need to find out what that angle is. So and again that angle is just based upon uh, uh, based upon the known shear and this value here, uh, which uh, yeah, and 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 those that value there, uh, which is uh, you know just uh, a combination of the stresses on those two faces. So and we just need to figure out uh, you know take the inverse tan of that, and then we can rotate as needed. So that that allow us to figure out where our uh, location is where uh, the well, sorry, it'll figure well us to figure out uh, what the uh, how much we need to rotate our frame of reference uh, to get there. So again, say for example, uh, you know, let, let let's for example, for simplicity's sake, say that. Uh, both of those are one. So that so if both of those are one, then that's a 45 degree angle. Uh, so for example, a stress state that would uh, result in this, you would say have so our x, uh, so that's one MPA right there. Uh, then this value here needs to be one. So our, let's say we make that three MPA we make this one MPA, uh, then our three minus one divided by two, three minus one is two divided by two, that gives us one. So that would, cor yeah, that, that would correspond to that. So if we want to take this and uh, get to a position where we have our, uh, uh, our, our, our zero shear stress state, then we need to rotate this 45 degrees divided by two. So we're actually at, oh, what is that? That's 22 and a half. So that, so our x prime and our y prime relative to the x, 22.5 degrees. Uh, as for the values of that, so again, uh, essentially what we're doing here, so what's, so essentially what we, we want to picture this as, we're starting off with this position here for our positive x face, and then kind of the opposite one is our, is our uh, y face. Uh, so, uh, and then we'd be moving up until we get to this value here. So what is that value here? Well, okay, that value there is just our sigma average plus our radius. 
So again, kind of just scrolling back up here. So, it, okay, so sigma average is easy. If our, uh, if our sigma x was three and our sigma y is uh, one, then our sigma average is equal to two MPA. That's, that there is two. For our R, so, what do we, so that's three minus one, three minus one divided by two, that's one. So all this is one squared, one MPA squared, plus our shear stress here squared. That was one as well. That'll make our R square root two. So 1.41. Uh, that means that when we rotate up here, we get to a position of this two plus the 1.41, which means that uh, on our X face, this stress here is gonna be 3.414, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas on our y, our original y face, when we change it to the y prime, uh, that ends up with two minus square root two. So that'll be 0.5857, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 5, 8, 7, 8, we'll round that, NPA. So that's how we use that graphically. It's, it's drawing a circle. Uh, also, so, uh, yeah, also, uh, our maximum in-plane shear can be easily found by that, because, again, our, you know, this, uh, more circle represents our, uh, stress, uh, our, our stress state. So if we want to get to a position where we are at maximum shear, well, that's there and there, right? So the magnitude of that, R. Tau max is equal to R. So our positive tau max is found by rotating from the original position here. Po negative shear max is found by rotate by taking uh, you know ro rotating the, the other direction basically. So simple enough, right? Um, we just have to uh, yeah uh, we we. It's a relatively simple way to represent uh, those rotations. So again, I will specify that was in-plane shear. We've also got out-of-plane shear. So the problem here is, you know, if we, if we are looking at a plane stress state, uh, and it, it, say we say we solved for this so that we're looking at the orientation that is in the principal stresses. And for the record. Uh, Typically speaking, uh, we usually denote uh, for for plane stress states, plane stress conditions. Just sigma one is going to be the largest of those two. And then there's also a sigma three here. That's going to be zero in plane stress uh, states, right? So we got we got this cube. We got forces that are acting on four of the six faces of the cube, uh, but uh, in this condition, it's not. But we still need to we still need to kind of figure out what would happen if we looked at the other planes and kind of tilt their head. So if we look at that stress state in th these different orientations. So again, here, here's our x, y. We've been looking at that the entire entire time along. You know, it's got it's got positive stresses in the in the uh, uh, one direction. It's got positive stresses in the other direction. But here, 
We've also got the ZX and we've got the ZY. So again, still no forces in the Z direction uh, and those forces in the uh, in the uh, oh, sorry, I guess it's sig sigma one, sigma two, and then our sigma sigma three is equal to zero. Now we'll, again, yeah, we're looking at it. We're looking at it at the orientation where the x is one, y is two, and uh, z is three. So if we do the Mohr circle, uh, so it, we, we already did. We sorry, we already did the Mohr circle for this. We kind of still need to do the Mohr circle for this. So essentially, uh, we get three circles because we're we got three different planes. So our sigma x, sorry, our, our sigma one, sigma two, uh, that corresponds to this circle right here. You can see we got the we got the sigma one, we got the sigma two. We also got two other circles here. Got one circle here that corresponds uh, to the sigma two, si sigma three, which is equal to zero. So our two and our three right here. And we've got our sigma one and our sigma three is equal to zero. And that corresponds to this big circle here. So the actual shear stress that will arise in this situation is actually going to be larger than it would have uh, uh, than we would have calculated if we only looked at the uh, at what was happening in the x y plane. So uh, I, this is for when both our one and twos are positive. We've also got situations uh, where we have uh, uh, a sigma y that's a sig sorry a sigma one that's positive a sigma two that is negative so tensile and compressive. So if we were looking at you know just the uh, just the in plane stresses in x y and z here, this is what we get for the ones that are you know the, the non-zero ones. And then including our, our sigma 3 is equal to 0 here. Again, corresponds to three different more circles. Just, uh, you know, we end up plotting the, you know, our, our, our sigma 1 and our sigma 2 are there and there. So the radius of the biggest circle is that. So that's what we would have calculated uh, if we didn't take into account the, the XZ. So, so we, we absolutely need to take the, uh, uh, we absolutely need to take the, the out of plane shear into account when both of your primary, when both of your prime stresses uh, both, both of the stresses in your prime axes uh, are positive or both are negative because then uh, then you're going to end up with uh, the other more circle being larger whereas yeah so this corresponds to this big one here this one here that corresponds to this smaller circle here and this one corresponds to this one here So our, our sigma ones and our sigma twos, you know, they're they're always they're they're always those are always the uh, when when we use one and two there that that's that is us signifying that we are talking about the primary uh, uh, the primary stresses there. So sigma one and sigma two are going to be the largest and the smallest uh, non-zero prime stresses as as needed. So uh, that's that. That's how we do uh, stress transformations. Uh, 
uh, by tilting her head and looking at it from a different direction. I will point out that uh, uh, those those were for plain stress conditions. Uh, you can get situations where uh, you know you got uh, stresses going on in all directions. Those can still absolutely be transformed to some orientation involving rotations about, uh, well, essentially you need to, uh, you just need more than one rotation in order to kind of get to the point where there are still no shear stresses. So no matter what the stress state is, you can always get to a stress state where there is no shear stress. Um, uh, you know, you can tilt your head and look at it, and there's always going to be some, some condition where there is no shear stress. So there is a strain version of Morse circle. Um, technically speaking, I think it's a, uh, kind of uh, derived based off of an assumption of plane strain conditions. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that those almost never happen. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Sometimes you know, sometimes in some cases they will, but most of the time uh, you, you don't get them. Most of the time, what you end up getting is plain stress, uh, which doesn't cause plain strain because of the Poisson's ratio effect. So you know, if you're if I'm pulling in this direction, pulling in this direction, it's going to cause strain in those two directions. It's also going to cause strain in this direction. That thing's going to shrink. Uh, so unless there's something preventing that deformation, you're typically going to get uh, at least some of that. Uh, but uh, we can still use the plane strain transformation, just kind of uh, uh, kind of just pretending it's uh, uh, make, making the assumption that we're in a plane stress scenario, and then using the strains that we can measure in order to figure out what the stresses are. So this allows us to use strain gauges planted on the surface of the uh, uh, of an object in order to figure out what the stress is going on there. Uh, so um, I'm not going to go through the full derivation uh, for the plain strain ones. It's rather similar to uh, what we saw with the stress um, uh, one. The main difference is You'll remember the equivalent here, there was a two. There was a two in there. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, here, I'll just scroll up. Scroll up to the equivalent. Uh, right. Yeah. So, there's a two right there that doesn't show up in the plane, in, in, this, in the strain version, just kind of due to the way that shear stress is uh, defined. Oh, sorry, shear strain is defined uh, compared to shear stress. Uh, so as a result, uh, we're still able we're still able to you know use a Morse circle. Uh, the main th main thing that we got to change here is just uh, when we are um, uh, yeah. So we can still we can still use a Morse circle. We can still plot the strain uh, the, the the normal strain. And the shear strain, we're just using the shear strain divided by two as the uh, negative act, as the vertical axis there. So uh, still calculating the r uh, based upon our x, our y, and then the shear. But again, just the shear divided by two in this situation. Uh, this one had already been divided by two because that's you know, the difference there. Uh, anyways, so uh, yeah, so we can do these uh, strain. Uh, uh, road, you know, we can fix, we can we can use this to figure out what our uh, uh, kind of what the principal strain orientation is, and you know measure it as needed, and that will allow us to also figure. Uh, and basically those types of transformations that we can do, um, it allows us to take, say, a strain rosette, which in, uh, will have like three strain gauges oriented at uh, 120 degrees apart, 
and if we figure basically that allows us to, to to knowing the strain in this direction and in this direction and this direction it allows us to figure out what the uh, uh, what the strain uh, you know in the principal orientation is again this would be ignoring any strain coming in and out of the page uh, but you know if we're, if we're putting something on the surface we know at there at least um, you know, on the surface, there's no stress. Or, well, okay, I'm not saying there's no stress. There could be some stress due to being, say, on the inside of a pressure vessel. Uh, but, you know, we, we're, we already take that into account when we do our pressure vessel stuff. Uh, so anyways, um, what am I... Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we can do that. Uh, so we need, we, we do need uh, at least three of the three strain gauges in order to, to do this, because again, if we we only were measuring strain in this, you know, in this direction, in this direction, uh, then we would uh, not be able to figure out what the corresponding shear stress would be. Uh, so yeah, we need we need to. Uh, uh, we need we need to get it from at least three orientations in order to make that transformation. Uh, yeah, we'll do a, we'll do a few uh, stress and strain transformation problems. <laughs>